shadowy plots simmering under the fog of war, hidden operations conceived in the dead of night, ambitious and shocking schemes targeting the very heart of the Allied powers. In the uneasy years leading up to World War II, Nazi Germany hatched secret plans and operations aimed directly at North America. Underestimated by her enemies, she sought to cripple their infrastructure and morale through subterfuge and destruction. This is the story of Germany's cunning plots across the North American homeland, and their web of covert missions, naval strikes, and bomber projects shrouded in mystery, spanning from hilarious propaganda to secretive sabotage, from imposter soldiers to wild bomber prototypes, we chronicle this clandestine war against the Allies, a war meant to terrorize and demoralize as much as destroy. As our story takes us back in time to the underbelly of the Second World War, we find ourselves in the deep layers of the German Ministry of Aviation, with the first subject of our tale, a tantalizing and ambitious plot bubbling under Hitler's regime. This was the America Bomber Project. It's a word that ushered in chills of dread and awe in its wake. The America Bomber underscored the strategic ruthlessness of the Nazi regime under Adolf Hitler. This was no ordinary military scheme, but one that would defy the laws of geography, soaring high above the ambitions of ordinary warfare, aiming to bring about an unprecedented shift in the tide of war. Or at least, that was the plan. High vaulted ceilings echoing with the relentless clatter of German engineering, crammed with industrious figures hard at work on a craft unlike any other. Their aim was to maneuver the impossible, a lethal bomber that could transition the expanse of Atlantic, unloading its deadly payload onto cities of the United States, and return home, all without the need for refueling, a tall order in the 40s with the technology of the day. Now, the purpose of this project extended far beyond just the mere physical intent of causing destruction. It represented a strategic ploy to disrupt, dismantle, and eventually demoralize the adversary. German command assumed that the psychological tremors set off by the prospect of such a bomber would offer an advantage, shaking the confidence of Allied forces and bringing an element of hesitancy to their cause. We now know in hindsight this would have had the exact opposite result. Intrinsically linked to the America Bomber project was the rapid progression of innovation and technology that thundered through the era. Ensuring the heartbeat of this initiative remained convulsive with life was Reichsmarschall Hermann Göring, an integral part of Hitler's core team. Meanwhile, German aircraft manufacturing titans, such as Messerschmitt and Junkers, brewed a competitive storm, each attempting to outdo the other, adding fuel to this ceaseless race against time and the Allies. The project, for all its brash vision and fantastical technical marvel, was also shackled by clear limitations. As the war progressed, Nazi Germany found its resources stretched perilously thin, forcing difficult trade-offs between initiatives. Aircraft manufacturing and maintenance efforts were channelized toward more immediate needs rather than conceptual projects, gradually starving the America bomber of momentum and priority. Technical roadblocks posed a constant challenge, as Nazi engineers struggled to design an aircraft with the stipulated range and payload capacity. The extreme demands of transatlantic flight called for advanced aviation technology, that was simply not within Germany's grasp at the time. Persistent engine trouble, structural issues, and lack of pressurized cabins halted progress. Allied intelligence caught wind of the America bomber by 1943 and were rattled by its potential had it come to fruition. They stepped up long-range bomber production and prepared air defense systems to intercept any such threat. But as the war tilted increasingly in favor of the Allies, our first project faded in relevance and was eventually abandoned by 1944. The ambitious project ended up a footnote in history rather than a tide-turning weapon. As the Second World War churned through its volatile timeline, Nazi Germany hatched another insidious plot aimed at disrupting vital American infrastructure. Codenamed Operation Pastorius, the plan entailed covert sabotage attacks deep within U.S. borders, carried out by undercover agents. The objective was as strategic as it was shocking, to spread turmoil on mainland U.S. soil through targeted demolitions and terror attacks. This plan took shape in early 1942, under the approval of Admiral Wilhelm Canaris, head of the German military intelligence. Canaris handpicked a team of eight agents, all German-Americans who had returned to Germany before the war. Their familiarity with American culture and language would enable them to blend in effortlessly as they carried out their destructive missions. In June of 42, the team of saboteurs equipped with explosives, detonators, and incendiary pens departed from German submarine U-202 
and arrived on the shores of New York and Florida. They came perilously close to succeeding in their goals of chaos and disruption, having identified key rail bridges, aluminum plants, and canal locks as targets, all before U.S. authorities discovered and foiled the plot. While seemingly outlandish, Operation Pastorius underscored Nazi Germany's strategic focus on crippling the American homeland. However, right as they were making their landing on the American homeland, the operation suffered its first blow. Coast Guard patrols discovered team leader George Dash and accomplice Ernst Berger at the landing site itself. Though the pair managed to escape temporarily, Dash eventually turned himself in and betrayed the plan. With Dash's confession, the FBI swiftly apprehended the rest of the team members across New York and Chicago before they could execute any attacks. By June 27th, a mere two weeks after landing, the entire sabotage plot was broken and its members behind bars. Hitler's plan to unleash chaos on the American homeland had been foiled. By August of that year, all eight captured agents were tried before a secret military tribunal and sentenced to death. Six were executed, while Dosh and Berger received prison sentences in return for Dash turning state's witness. For Nazi Germany, Operation Pastorius proved a stinging failure, underscoring the logistical difficulty of striking directly at the American heart. As the climactic Battle of the Bulge exploded in December 1944, the German war machine unleashed a clever deception gambit under the codename Operation Grief. Led by the notorious Otto Skorzeny, its aim was to infiltrate American lines using English-speaking German soldiers disguised as U.S. troops. The ingenuity of this plan provides fascinating insights into the strategic mindset guiding Nazi Germany's military maneuvers. Weeks before the battle kicked off, Hitler himself approved the operation, recognizing its potential to sow chaos and confusion amidst enemy ranks. Skorzeny handpicked roughly two dozen German soldiers proficient in English, and accustomed their appearance and manners to imitate American G.I.s. The premise was ingeniously simple yet potentially very impactful on the battlefield. Equipped with stolen U.S. Army jeeps and uniforms, the ersatz soldiers were instructed in American customs and slang. Each carried exotic weaponry to further the disguise, like the American M1 carbine. The disinformation campaign was complemented by German tanks painted as American Shermans, creating a facade of an Allied counterattack. As the bulge offensive unfolded, Skorzeny's soldiers infiltrated U.S. lines, misdirecting troops and spreading disorder. Though initial chaos was sparked, the operation fell short of its ambitious goals of disrupting command and control during this climactic and critical battle. The U.S. military soon implemented countermeasures to defuse the disinformation and blunt the operation's impact. Troops were instructed to quiz suspicious soldiers on American trivia and ask for details like the capital of a random state. Checkpoints demanded proof of identity through documents and dog tags. Before long, dozens of Skorzeny's men were caught behind enemy lines and imprisoned. While momentarily disruptive, Operation Gray failed to deliver the massive confusion it intended to at the bulge. Its limited success highlighted both the ingenuity and overreach of Nazi Germany's deception tactics against a vigilant Allied force. As America's entry into the war loomed in 1941, Germany plotted a new U-boat offensive aimed directly at U.S. shores. Codenamed Operation Drumbeat or Paukenschlag, its objective was to cripple vital shipping along the U.S. east coast in the Caribbean. The audacious naval campaign formed a key part of Germany's strategy to spread chaos across the American mainland. Grand Admiral Eric Rader planned the attack as a surge of U-boat assaults, exploiting the U.S. Navy's unpreparedness prior to formal war. They targeted merchant vessels running unescorted routes, lacking in vigilance and defenses. The operation aimed at achieving rapid results before the U.S. could marshal defenses, ultimately necessitating a costly diversion of Allied resources away from Europe. Thirty long-range U-boats that were covertly redeployed from the Mediterranean to the U.S. eastern seaboard commenced hostile operations as soon as the Nazi dictator declared war on America. Priority targets were troop transports and oil tankers sailing between the U.S. and the Caribbean. Thus, Paukenschlag was envisioned as a devastating preemptive naval strike designed to cripple America's maritime economy. Uh, historically speaking, if you're looking to stay alive, that's probably not a good idea. As the operation kicked off in January of 42, the audacity of Germany's submarine wolf packs in U.S. coastal waters initially paid rich dividends. Mass disruption was unleashed on vital shipping routes along the American East Coast and Caribbean. 
but soon it ultimately fell short of its grand objectives due to tenacious Allied counteractions. In the first five months, U-boats sank over 400 ships off the U.S. seaboard, sadly claiming thousands of lives. This crippling impact on commerce and morale sparked panic up the eastern seaboard, with citizens fearing bombardment. But the U.S. Navy soon marshaled its resources, laying protective minefields and deploying patrol aircraft fitted with advanced new radars, largely unseen prior to this time. Destroyers armed with sonar and depth charges were diverted from the Pacific and started escorting coastal convoys. Stringent shipping blackouts and coastal dimouts were implemented to deny U-boats visual targeting at night. As defensive measures stiffened, the German underwater onslaught lost steam and, by August, largely subsided, though sporadic attacks continued throughout the war. While temporarily successful, Paukenschlag ultimately failed to isolate America or sever its maritime supply lines. Nazi Germany's various plots and ploys targeting North America substantiates their burning strategic focus on directly striking the Allied homeland. But these campaigns revealed logistical limitations, intelligence failures, and counteractions that stunted the German offensives. While momentarily disruptive overall, the Nazi plans for targeting North America constituted more of a psychological threat than a crippling one, and their failure highlighted America's and the Allies' staunch capability to unite in the face of their adversaries and global evil.